So the stories have been, been making rounds again about the 1590, about the 12 volt high power cable and of course them breaking. I just wanted to make this video because there's something that's missing about most of the other sources that are talking about this. Mostly it's about this story, about the 12 volt high power cable and about it being a third party cable. I've also seen a video from Der Bauer where he talks about there not being really a difference between a third party cable and the official cable and I don't really agree. So in this video I just wanted to go over that and explain it a little bit and also explain why the cable, well, what the difference is between the cables. To start off with, I still want to say the cable design is awful. They should not have put it in, they should have taken it out. I would rather have four 8-pin cables than this, or maybe even three 8-pin cables, because you're just trying to push way too much power through a small area. And what that also means is that the, the tolerances get a lot smaller and the margin for error is a lot smaller. There's no real safety margin here. The reason they, well, the way they try to alleviate that is by making a new standard. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Well, one specific part of the standard. There are other parts about the standard that third party cables also have to comply to, even though it's impossible to really test. But one part of the standard talks about the female part of the recept um, of the cable. So the part that plugs into your graphics card. And what they essentially say, this is not the first version of the spec, by the way, this is a version they came out later. So this is after the 39, I think it's 2022 and 2023. Um, I don't remember, I, I made a video about this as well. Uh, so they made a new standard after it coming out. So maybe not everyone has read it, but in this version, there's more testing uh, especially testing about the difference in resistance between each pin because if you have a lot of current going through one pin then that pin is very likely to burn up and if you have it spread on all the pins then they won't it's not going to burn up because it's like nicely leveled and there's nothing really to make sure that happens there's also a video about build uh, from buildzoid who talks about that so i'm not going to talk about that uh, the design here is well they they say you have to use one or two designs uh, the, you have the three dimples or you have the four springs and this is, this, these are specific designs for this connector. Uh, well, the specific design, these are a type of design for this connector. There are other connectors here. You can have two springs, you can have less dimples. Uh, even, even other ones where you just have like, just a square where you just mesh something in. And of course, those are not really going to be capable of that. Uh, in the old standards, 8-pin or 6-pin, it was probably a little bit less stringent. But that's also because you were not really trying to pull as much current through the pins and the pins were also a lot bigger which I'm, I'm, go I'm gonna I'm gonna show you as well later so these are the two that are um, yeah that are in the standard and then when I look at I, I made a screenshot of their Bowers video where you put a microscope on it and what I can see here is that this doesn't follow that standard uh, so this is a, a leaf design um, a spring design as you can see, uh, see there uh, and it would have to mean that there is a spring on all four sides. And I can only see a spring on the left and on the right. So compared to the standard, you only have two contact points. And that's obviously going to be... It's going to be worse than a standard. I still think it's an off cable, but it's not really up to standard. I don't know when they sold it. Maybe they sold it before the standard came out. Um, I don't think it's... Um, I don't think it's probable. I think lots of these cables especially came out for the 4090, 4080, stuff like that. Um, but that does show that the third party cable was not up to standard. Looking at that, I thought, well, I have two of these cables myself, so why don't I take a look at that? So the first one here is the Corsair cable. Uh, this is the cable I got for my 4080. It's been running in it for two years now. It's running fine. Uh, I took a microscope to it and the surprising thing is that even this one doesn't really meet the spec. It's only two dimples. Whereas the spec says there should be three dimples. So this one doesn't really, is not really according to spec. Uh, there are also different, different manufacturing tolerances that are into play here. So if, uh, if the connectors are like a little bit bigger, or maybe the... Um, the form that they push these into has worn out a little bit, which means that all of these 
squares are going to be slightly bigger, then the contact, of course, is also worse. And the thing to remember here is, especially with um, with 12 volt, is that with, with these lower voltages, you don't really have as much a wetting as happens with like a 230 volt, something like that. But that's, um, I'm not an electrical engineer, so don't take my word on that. So it's very surprising that the official Corsair cable that I bought for 50 euros also isn't really completely up to standard, even though it has worked fine. But I have a 4080, it doesn't really pull as much as a 4090 or 5090. Uh, and even in games, it doesn't really pull more than 350 watts very often. So then I thought, well, why don't you have a look at the NVIDIA one? Uh, NVIDIA one, this is the one that came with my graphics card. So it's an adapter, it goes from 3 8 pins to this 12 pin high, um, connector. And the interesting thing is that it does have the three dimples. It does kind of, it does kind of look that the dimples have a slightly different size. The middle dimple looks a little bit smaller than the back one. Uh, and also the front one for some reason. Uh, the other interesting thing is that I can see that there's like a gap. The, there's a gap on the top and on the bottom, so there might be like a little bit of a of a tension there, uh, just to make sure that you have proper contact. There's also like metallurgical stuff about um, what kind of metal you use, what kind of plating you use here, to make sure you have the right contact. But it does seem that Nvidia themselves, or uh, where I got the graphics card from. Uh, does follow the standard, so that makes it a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to point the finger at third-party ones. I still, I still think the connector is awful, but we should, we should look at the information that we have here. Now you've seen these three connectors, and I thought, why don't I also show you a connector that is made for an eight-pin? And I think this really shows you how small the twelve-pin connector is really is. So this is this is of the eight pin, and you can see already. Well, it's um, it's not really a, a a real high quality one because this is an adapter from two six pins to one eight pin. Um, but it's really surprising to see like how big, how big these lobes are, how big this connector is, how much more space there is, and also the pin that goes in here is also going to be. A lot bigger and the funny thing is that each of these pins has less current going through it than this small 12 pin uh, connector and when you have such a big pin and you have less current going through it uh, I'm not saying that these cables never had issues because even these cables will break because if I mean of course from this 8 pin you have three uh, 12 plus 12 volt plus ones so it's still only three ones uh, three connectors for 150 watts if you have two that don't make right contact you will have all that current going through one cable you can still burn it up but it's a lot less worse than you have with the 12 12 volt one and it makes the manufacturing tolerances a little bit a little bit easier and makes that there's like a little bit more choice on the, on the connector. And then even still, the, this is like two lobes, two very, they look very big to me. Uh, and things that are bigger are also easier to keep in red tolerance because tolerance is very often based on, um, it's very ba it's very relative, relative to the original size. So if you have tolerance based on a couple of millimeters, it's gonna be a bit easier than if it's uh, over one millimeter. So that's it. I just uh, I just wanted to look at like the information about some video, um, yeah, about some images to compare, just to have so you have an idea about the third-party cables or not. I would love to hear or see about other third-party cables and also Nvidia cables if they all follow the same pattern, or maybe the ones that well maybe there are also third-party cables that also are according to spec because I think from seeing this now when I if I would buy a new graphic card, I really would want uh, an official or third-party cable that does follow the spec correctly. Uh, and also, I would rather not use an adapter, so something that goes from the GPU straight 
to the power supply. Uh, but yeah, there's not a lot of information about that. So thanks for listening. And yeah, if you have anything, you can put it into the comments. Have a nice day.